Scully. Agent Scully. <laughs> Mulder and Scully. <laughs> Episode six. Here we are again, Knock Off Nation. It's the boys signing on again. We got Friday afternoon, quarter past six, feeling good heading into the weekend. Danny's back in the house. What's up? What's up? And uh, throwing down for his first time here at the Knock Off. We got Kyle. Hey guys, how you thanks. doing, man? Yeah, good really, to, really good. Thanks. <laughs> good, to, good to I'm have. Well, you. thank you. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> yep, do, doing quite well for the Friday. <laughs> Friday. Yeah, man. no. Thank you very much. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Yeah, there we go. So you, you, ha- you have listened <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, like, yeah, I have. Any on, on any on our on our feedback? Like, you digging it? No, I really enjoy it. Uh, I was a bit surprised, and it. Honestly, it just sounds like I'm here on a Saturday with everyone chilling. It just sounds like that sort of chat, and that's, you know. That's the thing. We've had some reach, too, in the feedback, too, which I've been stoked about personally, Danny. Like, Danny's one of the OGs, as you know, and we've gone from the reach, as far as we're aware at the minute, we stretched down to the Goldie to Mount Isa all the way over to California. Yeah, shout out. NorCal, what's up? Unreal, (laughs) unreal. But, hey, we're here at the weekend. I hope you caught up with the recap, uh, pre- not a recap, the preview rather of the UFC 202 from last mm-hmm. weekend. We laid all our tips on the line, so we won't break it down for you too much here, repeating ourselves, but holy fucking shit, <laughs> did you see that media day? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> big, big week of media. They, re- they released a lot of shit, that Bad Blood doco, mm. all the embeddeds. I've saved the embeddeds for later on tonight, but um, that press conference, I only saw the highlights, but uh, from all reports, fucking bottles and cans being thrown at each other. and Just a, a, a real weird vibe to that whole um, presser. Like, McGregor rocked up late, apparently, so Dana was visibly frustrated about that. You could absolutely see it with him where, you're like, where's Connor? He's yeah. like, look, we're starting it. This guy needs to start respecting people's time because mm. we've got a bunch of staff here. Everything's coordinated. Just turn up. Everyone, yeah. everyone else yeah. is doing it. Come on, man. It's it's. Hip- all part of his mental warfare. Mm. He's trying to get that over over That's advantage. It. It's my by, show. Yeah, it's my yeah, show. I think he late. he plays into that with his, for his own confidence levels. I, I think like even oh yeah. It, um, and you could see even just in the little bit that I watched, Connor was visibly agitated as well. The mm. way he was chewing his gum ferociously, like with those Stockton boys up in the crowd, just giving <laughs> him fucking heaps, man. Mm. This last uh, episode of Embedded, you're in for a treat. It's yeah, the backstage nice. to all of that. You see a bit of conversation between Shola and Connor. Like, I won't spoil it alert for anyone, but uh, holy shit, what, a, what an occasion. And it hasn't, hasn't had the same feel leading in as the first one because this only happened... The hype was so crazy in the first one because it was 12 days where we've sort of spaced it out over the eight weeks of prep for this one. And single-handedly there, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's sort of about the martial arts or whether you think it's fighting like the, the Diaz's do, this got attention and clickbait everywhere and that sells, man. So, job yeah. done. Yeah. I thought it was interesting to hear that um, apparently there's not nearly as many Irish fans in Vegas for this mm. fight. That's it, man. Do that, do, is that relating to the Euros and the Olympics? Are the Irish travelling for that as well? Or is immediately with that loss, does it take a bit of the shine off, you reckon? Oh, definitely. You know, like he, he rose. You see, you saw him just soar up. And like the hype train, and it just felt like, oh yes, 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 and, and they tra- and they travelled. Oh, didn't they? Yeah, you know, and then it's like, well, we were shocked as everyone, you know, that first round. <laughs> Jeez, like, just <clears throat> you know the the performances and that hype train. It's so easy to get caught up in that, and you forget that it is a game about fighting. But you know, when somebody's got like an undefeated streak like mm. that, and they talk mm. the talk, and you just yep. you want to believe them. It's that star power. So he would have had fucking hordes of mm. people it's like the ronda rousey thing it's you know just like f- famous begets famous you know mm. the the more you like raise your profile the more your profile gets raised and he was just unstoppable at that point and i think undoubtedly a loss has to humanize him in a lot of people's I, eyes i just think that um all the um the people from boston actually just went home like that, that's true. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. there'd be a lot, lot of bar- fucking yeah. Irish in Saudi, yeah, down yeah, in Saudi, down in Saudi, yeah. 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 <laughs> ah. But look, the, with um, with the whole like people not traveling thing as well. I made a point off air today about um, the whole Mac life and the money McGregor sort of spec sort of format that he has. I'm not going to say copied off Floyd, but he's definitely sort of seen the success of what Floyd has had, and mm. especially on a meteoric rise like he had while well, he had that undefeated streak in the UFC. And whether or not, if he comes out and takes the L on Sunday, that shine comes off a little bit even more, I feel. So I think he'd really he'd have to go back to 45 in that instance. But all of a sudden, if he comes out and breezes through Nate, because in that first fight, he was tooling him up. Like, he absolutely... Oh. If he can come in smarter 
and no, it's five rounds. And look, I, I've I've said on the record last week that I think it'd be too good, and it hasn't changed for me. Can't help but fucking break it down to get that. I know, I know, I know, man. I know. It's, it's just one too good. It's you can talk great. about it for <laughs> weeks. The, how, how the absolute. Uh, I've, it would be dead set probably in the hours where I've been thinking about this shit and dedicating oh, my yeah. time to this stuff yeah. this week. It would yeah. be in the hours. Oh, oh but. To me, the uh, that presser today where the bottles were flying, it looked like something out of a WWE kind of setup. You know, yeah. like oh, don't you come here? Well, it was it, was, it had Hollywood written all it, over it. it. Was, yeah, I it mean, was. it does, but I think it's like you know, you can't fucking compare the two really no. because it attached oh, at no, the no. end no. of all that hype is two dudes getting locked in a fucking cage together and trying to kill each other, literally yeah. trying to with your bare hands end somebody. That's it. And uh, that's there's a whole lot more gravity attached to that than going out and being like, okay, you you throw throw me, then I'm yep. gonna do this crazy flip off the thing. Oh, you really want to get oh, hit with yeah. this barbed wire yeah. and shit? Yep. Like, yeah, let's do it. Like, mm. it's a different thing. Like, I don't know, I don't know. And I've never fucking done either. Actually, I've done a little bit of pro wrestling in a <laughs> high school drama <laughs> performance. Actually, oh man, <laughs> I, I was right alongside him in that. We did uh, Trafford Tansy for the for the record for all you fucking theatre buffs, theater out, buffs there. out there. <laughs> Shout out! I'm sure you're listening. Andrew far, Jones, far and wide, yeah, <laughs> Jonesy. I, I, uh, I saw our high school drama teacher. No, I, no uh, names, yeah, no uh, names. Yeah. AJ, yeah, yeah, that's all right. That, that was his fake name, Doctor Jones. Yeah. Jones. That that was his fake name. We gave. No one's got a name that obvious. Yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, it was John uh, Smith. Uh, <laughs> Christmas brother. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was actually. Um, <clears throat> they did it with the local girls' school, so it was like the two schools got together and had to do this drama oh. performance where we were literally like opposite sexes wrestling each other and stuff like that as 17 year olds wow. and uh it was a fun play man. It, was, <laughs> oh man. it was different man it i don't doubt that a, after school we'd go over to their school and practice our moves and we went to a uh, we actually went to a grappling class at the local y really? we yeah did. we, we, we did, went down to the yeah. y the pcyc sandgate grapplers at suncorp <laughs> stadium at Suncorp. Actually. oh wow and it was run by this ex cop. <laughs> oh fuck! It was funny, man. It was like, I'll, I'll ne- never forget it uh, to the day I, to the day story, I die, yeah. man. Well, uh, I'll, I'll let Dan- Danny lead in with it because he was highly involved. But I, I was involved in the play too, and we end up just turning up at uh, this gym to do rolling, and we're doing. But we're having to do. We're thinking it's going to be the theatrics of WWE, and we're doing some play acting yep. and stuff. But it was actually a grappling class. Yeah, and it was run by this like ex cop, like sergeant of the police. It was he ex or he was current? Ex. Oh, current. I think he current. Was current. He was he was yeah. working at the PCYC. So yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like yeah. a current sergeant of the police and like a real police type. You know Ooh. what I mean? Like he's been in that in that game for that long. So Did you roll with him, bro? The fucking hilarious thing was he kept on because we were basically a drama class full of girls and stuff as well. And he kept on singling me out to do the demonstrations. Cause he, like, I'm the like one, I guess who looks like a footy player more than anybody else there or whatever. And, um, and so he's getting me up continuously, man. And just basically like making me look like a fool a, in front a of everybody. grappling dummy. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting me up and like, just fucking taking me to school with me and him just being like, you know, when people show you a fight move and they're yep. like, no, just put your hand in no, 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 slower, slower. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay. And then they get you in a police hold and it's like, yeah, that's awesome, man. Like just doing that in front of everybody for like the whole class. Oh, what did you do to his daughter? And then at what the was end, that deep seated hate he against was, you? He was, je- he was like jealous, man. There was sort of yeah. that aspect like, oh, I'll bring this fucking young dude down a peg. Like, yeah. Cause, oh, like, like they were the girls, they're lapping it up and shit. Like deep yeah. seated, man. And then, um, there was someone like so you at his school. <laughs> That's and personal. Then <laughs> <laughs> and then so at the end, man, I've um I've called him out and I'm like, can you and me have a wrestle? <laughs> and uh, just just like 17 trying to prove my ego in front of like yeah. all these girls and stuff. Like this guy's just been punking me the whole lesson. And I'm just like, fuck it, you and me wrestle. Let's go on, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> called him out. And this dude's wearing a rash guard and shit. Like, and and I have never wrestled in my life. I did like two weeks of kickboxing as like an eight-year-old and quit. <laughs> And uh, that's basically my martial arts. Just like, you and your brother wrestling. Yeah, well, getting beaten up by my older brother like <laughs> as a kid. Footy and, grappling. Um, yeah. And I felt like I fucking had the dude for a good minute. Like uh, I was fucking putting in a good effort. He was obviously like letting me get get a bit yeah. better of him. And I had no experience whatsoever. So I was just doing, you know, like fucking whatever. 
And um, but yeah, then he ended up like pulling some move and fucking putting me in a chokehold or something like that. But at least Good I went on. out on my sword. Man. Yeah, imagine that! <laughs> just put both hooks in, take his back, and just <laughs> choke Tats, him unconscious choke him in front out. of everyone. The drama teacher's just like, oh, oh shit, like, this was a bad idea. He, he comes to and you're like, man, oh, you just went out so quick. Like oh. I tapped, like no, you didn't, man. Yeah, like, no, nah, nah, Daniel. Man, you, yeah, can you please not tell your parents about this? Yeah, we'll give yeah. you a plus yeah. for everything. Oh, oh, this got in a grappling, <laughs> mum, dad, I got in a grappling contest with this cop and choked this him out. Cop choked yeah, me yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck, man. This dude was just up over the top fucking goose bag. But he was. He that, was. W- that was in the last year of high school. And our, our guest here, Kyle, didn't quite make it that far. He's a, a yeah, high school. He's got a, yeah, he's got a fucking interesting life story, yeah. bro. I wanted to talk about this he's with you on here. Like, um, high, high school dropout that made it. <laughs> but via a, a strange path of events like i'll give you the brief breakdown but um and this is like forgive my rudimentary understanding of it but kyle left us in school to go work as a professional dancer on cruise ships yeah the next i heard he would um he was doing a tour of afghanistan serving in the army australian armed forces and uh and now you're studying astrophysics or uh, uh I've changed my degree about three Five times. Three yeah. times. The, the amount of study that I'm actually going to do, I could be a doctor. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. You know, but I've just found the right thing now. Um, so how many years of study have you done now as, a, as an adult? Four. 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 This four. I so would, that's the, that's the usual length of Jeez, a degree. Cool, yeah. cool. Mm. You could do a double degree in you four. You can be in front of a classroom next year. Like, yeah, I know. Like, like I should know what I'm doing. Teaching and Yeah. Shit. But um, no, now I'm... I'm doing electrical engineering, um, but it's electrical and aerospace uh, engineering and majoring secondly in um, software engineering. No shit. Yeah. I'm and, gonna s- and so I guess in... Um, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no. And I was just going to say I, um, I, I more avionics. Right. Like plane... But drones, like, Ooh. just some of the cool shit, you know, like... Real dolls? Like. Oh, yeah, I saw <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> what Kyle's referring to earlier today, I tagged uh, Maddie and Kyle in, a, in an Instagram post of um, the new, like, uh, sex doll robots that they're coming up with. And not just, you know, sex, but companionship dolls. And they're, like, putting all this effort into the software behind the... Um, they're like emotional responses and things like yeah. that. And it, there was I, there was interaction with it. You were having a conversation. She was it, like, it's "Why do you make me feel like that? Yeah. Take Some, your shirt like off. Take yeah. your shirt yeah. off. Yeah. Why do you want off. me to do that? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Uh, you feel like it's like wowza. Yeah. and yeah. It, for once it's not out of Asia. <laughs> you oh. know, they always come up with that sort of stuff. That's it, but yeah, uh, they're only scraping the surface with that shit, which is scary. But sorry, anyway, like back back but to you. Oh, yeah, but go down the rabbit hole there, folks. It'll get dark. Go from zero to one hundred yeah. real quick. So anyway, I fucked this chick. Like fucking stock, stock knockoff. Spent, like. spent about thirty seconds on Kyle's story and then uh, straight into some up. smut chat. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Thanks, guys. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, my my question that I really want to ask is like, when you were you know fifteen, sixteen, and dropping out of school, like, did you have that picture in your head at all that you were going to be working on fucking drones and and be at uni for so many years? No way. No way. I I can only see as far as my sight, you know, in, in terms of uh, my future. It's crazy. I When I was dancing throughout school and left at the end of grade 11. So you started dancing at what age? 13. Oh, 13. 12. Oh, okay. No, it was 13 because I was a year older than Is that everyone. somewhat late for dancers and shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they mate. They normally start when they're like five or something. Girls start. Geez, they can start when they're two, you know. They're True. It, it, some of the stories I've heard are crazy. Parents especially that are really, like, used to be dancers or didn't make it. There you go. Oh, yeah. man. The first thing she's doing <laughs> yeah. is joining a dance school. And then, like... Abby, the, Ma- what's I said, that? Pivot, step, pause, yeah, yeah, not turn, mom. pause, pivot, Come step, on. pause. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're, and they'll grab their feet and, like, really push them down and try and bend. It's mm. They're crazy, but... Yeah, man, honestly, um, but some dancers have made it with less. I've just seemed to get lucky and I just came through that time where there weren't that many boys, especially in Australia. I mean, dancing was massive, like has like in America or yeah. elsewhere, but Australia, we were pretty slow with the arts, mm. like coming through the 90s for sure. And True. I think what did a big time uh, for the arts for guys is the 2000 Olympics with the boot men, you know, like oh, that yeah, opening yeah, ceremony. Yeah, yeah, right on. Mate, I was dancing then and we saw that 
and it was just like I had my like my hero. I'm like, yeah, oh, I want to be that guy. It's the fire, like, yeah, yeah, little dude. fire under you. Oh, and I was dancing, but not like not too crazily. But I, I just uh, was just going along and really enjoying it because a bunch of dudes that w- weren't or were not gay. I don't know. Like yeah. it didn't. It, like that's one thing that's never bothered me. I've like at one point in my life, I had. 90% of my friends were gay, mm. you know, it's, um, the, it comes with the territory in that. Industry. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I really have a, yeah, it's a big crazy respect for a lot of guys. Um, but yeah, no, it was, um, it's a dedicated industry, bro, isn't it? Oh. Like, it, absolutely. Like, and do you know what, man, I think the, the dancing side of things, it opened a hell of a lot of doors for you there because Cole at, um, at the, what, the age of 18, did you first go on there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like going on boats, w- working on a... What P&O boats oh, did you P&O. work on? We're talking uh, big ships here. Oh, P&O. yeah. Oh, it's... um The Pacific Star was my first, um, and that was out of Brisbane at the time. You always remember your and first. And so, so how old were you? <laughs> I was 19. 19. Oh. Listen, oh. like, you, you don't... It, it, some people say, like, oh, what was the best part of your life? Oh, so far, you know. They're like, oh, I don't know. It, it's too hard. But if you ask me that question, I can tell you those six months was, I was on that ship. Cruise ships. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Nice. I was 19 years old, in my prime. Um, drinks were a dollar a shot. So if you had a double, uh, it's two bucks. You oh, know? Well. And, and 19 when you're... Like you go back to look how much piss you were cutting and how regularly you were cutting oh. piss back then. Living there with access to that every day, man, it, that it's you'd be in your element. Yeah. You know, honestly, yeah. in that in that six months, there was only two days in a row that I didn't get maggot. Yeah, oh. you're right though. You are cut out of wood at that fucking age. You can drink oh. every oh. night of the back, week if you back want up, to. Back yeah. up, just so easy. Man. Get, it, make sure if you get a couple of hours sleep, you're not barely hung over. These days, it's like a three day event oh, of, right. of being hung over. Yeah, yeah. cut prop, <laughs> giving cut proper sauce. But so you're doing nightly shows on those boats, like mate. Uh, they worked us like dogs on that yeah. first ship. We I we were in a se- because we mostly did seven day cruises out of Brisbane. Like boom. You stop at right. three, three ports in seven days, but they would just hammer us. Like, we were cruise staff as well, so we'd dance two shows a night, 45 minutes of some of the hardest dancing and exercise I've done on a rocking boat, sometimes half cut, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Still, still hanging from the night before. Oh, easily. Like, yeah, and yeah. what was, uh, when you when someone says, uh, oh, what was your, your favourite time, like, on that ship? And... Uh, honestly, there's <laughs> it's all a big blur. But if it was some of the time, it was with all my mates. You know, I was second in charge of a um, an emergency muster station. Right? If you want to go, if there's an accident and you want to get off, I'm I'm the guy pretty much helping you get off the boat. Yeah, right. But some there was some nights if there was an accident on that boat, you best on your own. Like oh, you get oh, fuck oh you. mate, I was just get the fuck out of dodge. Yeah, I mean, bro. the captain goes down with the ship, but. It like because half the staff are down there gets it and maggot. Yeah. So what do they what do they have you do? Like you're a staff member, but you're essentially a dancer. So you have scheduled performances throughout the day and night, or yeah, yeah. You'll have uh, you'll get a daily schedule every night, say uh, eight or nine o'clock. You'll know what you're going to do the next day. Right. It's in the platter or something, and it it you could be the platter is a room. No. So I think the platter is uh, the newsletter. Oh, they they call it different things on ships and different right, companies. Right, you, you right, know, right. Yeah, I've never been on a sh- on a cruise. Never, bro. Really? Never. 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 Do it. Yeah. In my time, and I w- I've already been on a cruise ship again as a passenger, but I want to get on there and do the longer cruises. True. And um, just because I know the ins and the outs, mm. like I know who to talk to, I know how to do this, <laughs> and I know how to get cheat things and <laughs> yeah man. money Allegedly. talks on shit yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> the almighty dollar that's it <laughs> but um you see any freaky shit on there like any 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 people like what sort of cruises are we oh, talking like long haul or mate um i've done all i've mm, done true. you've been as far as the caribbean and yeah, all really. over the shop haven't you uh, i've done uh asia uh america south america canada um, yeah, so all the South America, Asia, um, isn't that a crazy, Pacific? crazy fucking concept? You're essentially being paid 
to stand on oh, a fucking floating thing that's moving across, the circumnavigating the world and you're getting paid to be like fucking jazz hands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When wow. you're 19 and, years old. And, and there's a whole bunch of people just like fucking and getting drunk and everybody just partying and like cruise ships. It's, oh, a, it's a crazy idea, man. Imagine trying to like explain that to early early century explorers and shit like that. Like, you know, actually they could probably get down with it, man. You know what you're on now? Like... There'll yeah. be a lot of shit going out. Like people will be paying money sure to be on here right now. It probably actually existed back in the days if uh, Game of Thrones is as historically <laughs> accurate as it seems. Yeah, that's how they I take my history. They have some pretty debaucherous fucking parties on that show. Oh, mate. And honestly, we did we did party. Like if there was some of the... One of the craziest nights uh, that I can remember. It all sort of part gets to me every now and then. And I'm like, oh another story another story mm. but one of these ones we were uh, our last night of the ship and there are always people our age from brisbane so i'm you know i feel like i've got something in common and yeah. we are partying it's like i'm with my mates again and they pay and they come and watch the shows like throughout the trip and you know and it's really good they they get behind us like they saw guy dancers and these are brisbane boys like and they're just partying on and they they'd see us on the last night and we'd all go drinking and they'd all buy you drinks mm. and on cruise ships only people only drink cocktails and shots true you know past Oof. one o'clock <laughs> people it got crazy and good. you can buy a piss at any time of day or there's a, the bar would have opening and closing hours surely i'm pretty sure once you're out on um once you're out in the open, I think you can get booze really? whenever. Yeah, right. Th- so there'd be a specific bar that you go to if you're the oh, dude yeah, who still yeah. wants a beer at fucking four o'clock in the morning. Is there Stuff a- would be open if you wanted something. If you're willing to pay for it, if yeah. you've got the money. Yeah, is there like got- um? Is there what? What do they do on cruise ships in terms of cutting people off who've had either too much to drink or they're getting aggressive and shit like that? Does that sort of policing go on in there uh, much or for those cruises out of Brisbane? Um, they were the seen as the party boats. Mm. We've True. got, um, I know some of our mates that have come on that have been on there running around the halls naked or in underwear, you know, getting tackled by security. Yeah, right. That's what stuff, that's what happens on there. Yeah. People go Three crazy. days, man, just to bend. Like, yeah, that, I can yeah. see that happening. See, I think I? the three-day ones would be way more hectic than... Oh, like yeah. I've, 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 I've 14 right? day, like, yeah. Like Not only have I... Pace yourself a little I'm, bit more, you think anyway. <laughs> mate, I have done I have done that. I, I want, A mate from Sydney had a um, Bucks night out on um, one of the boats down in there two years ago. Three days, I was a passenger Ooh, for a Bucks party. Right. It's yeah. got the worst, you know, <laughs> two times two. Yeah. See, I almost, I almost think that that's like the only circumstance that I would really want to go on a cruise ship under. If I was going with some really close mates and we were going literally just to be pissed the whole time. Oh, mate, but I think maybe more than three days. And you kind of get in, you can't, yeah, or just like, it, it make a little bit of a, uh, a holiday of it. Yeah. Get into the groove a bit. And, oh, the you cruise got, ship life. You will party. You will yeah. party the first two days, I think, Cause, really Because it's got to be like a whole little society on there, right? Oh, like yeah. A little microcosm of, of yep. a city and stuff. It's a click. Can staff, yeah, true. Can staff bang passengers? There's, um, I'm sure it happens a lot. Mm. Oh, but not... Is there official rules about it? There's a little hand, oh, there's, hand, or is hand it just party at the, the sea. Like, zero, zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. What the do you own mean? So if you get busted? Yeah, you're off. There, we got told when we joined the ship that at, the point, at this point in 2007, there were five P&O workers sitting in jails waiting for their um, trial in Brisbane. What? Jails? Jail. What? For passengers saying that, they, oh, they, they came in there and raped me. Wow. Oh, mate, it is crazy. Allegedly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> not allegedly at all. <laughs> <laughs> fucking definitely. No, they, sh- they fucking scraped them. It <laughs> <laughs> Brutskis. That's wow, wild, man. Well, mate, th- there is, there's the famous story as well of the, like the. Well, we don't have to get that deep into it, but um, like a lady was drugged and got part like, and would end up dying on one of those cruise ships. Like yeah. best part when of like a that? decade ago. A so decade. Oh, I easily. Don't remember that? Yeah, Who so was she, that? She was one of the staff members. Yeah. So. Oh no no no! She was uh she was a passenger. Oh, right. Oh, right. What, okay. she, what cruise was that? What there cruise was ship was that? The same. P&O. Um, Fuck. Yeah, it was a ship yeah. before mine. The yeah, My right. uh, dance captain on that cruise that I worked on, 
he was on that ship when it happened. Oh shit! Like wow. pulled into dock and that that that, on that would be fucking crazy. Yeah, because you've got a dead body on yeah. board. Yeah, well, like oh, so. Shit. It's, yeah, shit. and oh. yeah. had I have um, why to kill the bars a lot? Oh, oh bro. Yeah, how was your cruise? Uh, yeah, yeah, it started out really well, but yeah. um, there was a um, rape and murder there. Basically, there was a rape yeah. murder. Yeah. Mate, and yeah. it, I've actually um, I've. M- can't wait to get on TripAdvisor and fucking give it. Used a to know, I used to know her son. You can't. You surely you can't blame the fucking cruise ship for that though. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not their fucking their total control over staff. I guess. No. Was it a staff member? No, 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 no. no. It was a, a guess. Actually, I was wrong right. there. I thought I had some, for some reason thought she might have been a cleaning lady on there or something. But no, it was um, what was a passenger on there and was yeah. It's definitely not the cruise ship's fault. They can't police everyone on there. <laughs> That's just the fucking well, blokes like yeah. yeah I too. Takes two to tango, and I don't know what went down there, so I can't really speak for it. But it was a fucking disaster what happened. It, it was, mate, and it, they're not to blame. They provide a lot of the party and stuff. That's that's what they do. That's that you're there to entertain and be the guest, or like like entertain the guests, and yeah. that's your job. Yeah, it's the customs, mate. Bro, yeah. oh, People the customs. they came in yeah. with Fanta. Like she was like she they came in with drugs. Yeah. So that's customs, you know. Right. You've got to go yeah. through customs. I yeah. go I went through customs if every time. You're looking time. for a finger to point, yeah. Yep. Drop the yeah. ball. Yeah. Wow, wow. I wonder if yeah, I guess customs everywhere adhere to the same restrictions. So it's obviously just uh I guess something slipping through the cracks, not necessarily yep. something that's like they're turning a blind eye, but I mean you never know. There's corruption and conspiracy everywhere, but we are known to throw some fucking mm-hmm. allegations oh, out there we and ain't, throw ain't some ain't people scared. under the some bus. We ain't scared. <laughs> so Australian <laughs> customs, yeah, uh, yeah, we love you. we love your work. Yeah. Uh, every time I come to the airport, everybody's really friendly That's and uh, shout beautiful. Out. Yeah. Shout out! So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cru- don't worry about my in. Uh, I, I put in a job there. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Just uh, scratch that application. It's all <laughs> yeah, <G. that's> done. <laughs> <laughs> the cruise ship's days ended with an ACL injury. Yeah, I did, mate. I was in um, the Med, of all places. I joined the ship in Venice and we sailed out and I was about to do a eight-month trip around the Med and half of a world cruise. Sounds dreadful. Oh, yeah. mate, it's tough. Yeah. I tell you what, you, <laughs> we get flown there. I mean, we do work, but a lot of people, oh, no, actually, we don't work. That's a lie. I call bingo, you know, yeah, and this right. is, I was telling Stewie before we even started, this mic, when I'm talking to it, it just sounds like I'm back on the cruise ships. Because mm. if I was talking to passengers, I'm talking on the mic. Yeah, here we are. The next right. station and is uh, <laughs> Toomble. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Kyle here, your crew staff. This is it. It's yeah. Paul. <laughs> next number. But I was... 43. I was Four three. <laughs> pissed <laughs> oh yeah oh, are you but yeah i mean like dancing as as an occupation like you're talking earlier about the arts and you know people mm. who express themselves creatively and i mean everybody dances for free you know fucking no, oh yeah nobody's like oh fuck i gotta go yep. dance like i mean obviously if it's your job then maybe it could become a chore but it got a bit mundane i'm not yeah not yeah, gonna say it i mean was ultimately perfect. you'd rather be on stage having a bunch of people clapping while you're dancing to some tunes than you would digging a fucking hole on the side of a road out in a suburb somewhere oh definitely it's being developed for but a state I oh, <laughs> yeah Me- Medi- mediterranean with cruise ships <laughs> yeah. laughter two dollar piss <laughs> Or, or a, a, a Delphin di- project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dig, digging a trench out the back of Rothwell. A Delph- Delphin I went, project I went labor hire worker. Oh. <laughs> no, I went way uh, I went way more south than that. I started digging holes with the army. And you know, like I, I woke up and I was in Barbados on a sunny day one time, then fast forward a year I'm waking up getting rained on in a river up in town. So one pretty year. much. Yeah, one wow. year. Before I started it, the gap was about one year. Yeah, working at uh, IGA. Yeah, IGA yeah. represent oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone there. Fortitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love but, that. And man. so, like, um, something that again, like, had been a, a forethought in your earlier life was to join the army, or just something that came up. Yeah, it was, uh, mate. Of um, my brother used to be in cadets. Um, shout out, but and I grew up, and I'm like mom and dad can i do cadets as well and they're like no you you do fucking everything else yeah. like you're not doing cadets if there's one thing you're not going to do it's that and i was i was definitely going to go in there after school but mom said no you're doing your dancing thing because i quit school to go dance you know i wasn't gonna just sort of turn my back on it that quickly 
Yeah, right. So you mean they saw that you had a natural ability for other things and they didn't want you to go too far down the the other road? Yeah, definitely. They knew that the passion I had and I would get them and I would be I would say that I'm gonna do this, I wanna do that. They never forced me to do anything. You know, yeah, so right. it yeah. was it was my want. They were um, never bending your feet. No like way. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> You will dance, Kyle. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I was You'll just dance better. <laughs> Enlist. Enlist. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just getting my um, gums rubbed with uh, Bundy Bear and like getting sneaking sips of Forex oh, Gold. Man. That's what was happening. Man, in, be- in between just playing so many pokies. <laughs> in that gap year that you had between jobs, we went through a poker machine phase. And uh, fuck, man. Well, the funny thing was, we're only looking at. Uh, if you're on Facebook, it gives you the memories these <laughs> days, these days on there. It'll thro- thro- do like a throwback Thursday for you automatically, where it'll show you a photo from on this day. So just pluck yeah, a yeah, photo, yeah. and they um showed Kyle sent us a couple of screenshots of ours in 2009. I think mm. it was. Yep. 2009, and just week after <laughs> week of weekends, it just keeps throwing back photos of us like pokey bender like us versus big red tonight like, like always sundays days. as yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> it had us there but god, so just god letting out. loose before you fucking oh. did your basic Cut training down. i suppose yeah so that I did. was while you're in townsville basic training no um basic training was down at kapuka down right. at um near wagga right and uh it's pretty eye-opening experience or oh uh, uh they say you should be you should be ready, you know, like they really tone it down. They're not going to, like if you saw a video of sort of some of the stuff, <laughs> you know, what actually really goes on there, you wouldn't be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I can do this. Anyone can do this, but it's hard. Yeah. It's tough. Oh, I bet, man. They're breaking you in to yeah. be uh, national security, basically. Yeah. Eh? But, yeah, and it is, it's tough, and but you're just not used to it. It's out of your comfort zone. I was a bit older. But there were seventeen year old guys there and you could see the hurt. Yeah, yeah. oh I bet. Like, like they actually they don't even know how to iron a shirt, you know. Like at least I was say twenty one, twenty two. I'd be remember. terrible. I, I, I iron my clothes and stuff, but I would be terrible by their standards. Oh, it, and that's after. something they, they really instill in you is to like take care of your shit, you know. Always. Like have you have your shirt ironed, your bed made, yep. like look bed, respectable. Bed made to the millimeter. Yeah, yeah, to the military right. precision. I've right. had my <laughs> bed thrown over. Like, really? Yeah. Th- everything like the whole the bloody mattress. How did you fuck it up? It so was bad. Two centimeters out, man, or a centimeter out. Don't get on the fold, like. But this, like, what they did. So, can you run us through like how to make the perfect bed? It's a, um, it's a like a forty-five degree angle on the on the back back corner. Like I, even now, I can I could make that really? easily. So you, really, by folding the sheet back down, like tucking it over, sort and of tucking thing, it like in. hospital tuck or whatever. Yeah, forty-five degree at the back, and I think it's something like if I it's twenty centimeters how far you can pull it back like the flap over near your pillow lock. and what you ironing <coughs> oh ironing to the centimeter millimeter yeah. oh. starch as well what yeah. do you reckon the psychology behind that is because like as a soldier you have to be so precise because you're essentially a professional killer mm. when the shit hits the fan precise like it's just Precision. everything down yeah. through repetition i think anyway that's that, me as, that's a, just no, as a bystander mate you're so you're right there because what what they try and tell us to do is on the um, parade ground when they teach you uh, parade so, ground. So parade ground is where you um, like where you do yeah where you do your marching. Right, like it's sacred. It's sacred ground. Eskimo pussy is yeah. real cold. <laughs> <laughs> Any of that shit go on? Cadence. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> hell, 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 I, I like <laughs> man. <mate. laughs> Special, <laughs> it, they it, it's really it's crazy. They oh, I love mate, that. they tone it up, and I think it's a bit of a like it's a bit of a joke between them all because they tone it up, and it's you know what it's probably what they had on themselves or not even as bad, hmm. but it was um a lot of it was really physically demanding, mentally demanding, um and they teach you to be ready, uh, precise. Yeah, what I was talking about on the pl- um, parade ground, like they will yell at you, give you directions. So you're under stress, but you're trying to think. So right. when you hear their voice giving directions and you're freaking out in the like whatever fog right. of war, yeah. you will listen to their voice. Yeah. And right. that that's cool. the, the basis. That's fundamental <laughs> shit right yeah, there. That's, that's fucking, right. that gives me chills, bro. Oh, like, absolutely. Thinking about man. that, like when there's just, you know, 
fuck, man. I've been in a in a Toyota Corolla when somebody lit off a firework once, and that's mm. probably as close as I've come <laughs> to like hearing a really loud explosion. <laughs> and believe me, that was fucking loud, man. Like fucking. The thing loud. about ing- <laughs> like explo- <laughs> honestly, man. The thing about explosions that with our headgear and stuff, I was. So Mate. you're wearing earmuffs, like oh, when, yeah, when yeah. you're on patrol and stuff like oh, that. Oh no, I because I was cavalry, so I was in Bushmasters and Aslavs, so I never Vehicles. really, I never really stood a foot on the ground, and I think I ticked the right box because yeah. fuck that. Mm, yeah, absolutely. They they stomp around with their backs on their pack. I roll around in mm. a in a fucking car. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, you know, like respect to you with whatever you, you know, feel like sharing, but what was it like to go to Afghanistan, man? You'd obviously never been to the Middle East in your life before. Like what was it like rocking up? No, well, I used to fly in and out of Dubai to um go to my cruise ship contracts. Oh. And funny thing is, we were only 40 minutes from Dubai. Uh and some it was hot. Yeah. Uh, some familiar out. Uh, f- uh, it was crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tempt that one. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so spont- spontaneous. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Can we do that again? Where specifically in the Pacific are you asking to go? No, but it's there was, and you're there for two weeks, but and then you go in there, and mate, f- one of the funniest things, and the timing of this is perfect because we got there. You're in um, near Dubai for at least a week or two doing pre-training just to get into country, right? Right. And then you go, um, you get there in country and you get a bunch of briefs, like safety briefs. So we're at Tarrant Cout. We just flew in. We just did some um, like safety briefs. This is where everything is. Make sure you don't get lost. Pointing out our ins, outs, our arcs and everything. So, but... <laughs> when we were getting our um because we were constantly getting shelled like at uh Taran Cout, we were like uh just a little sitting duck you know you're getting missiles shot at you and um while we were getting our brief on what the actual call for incoming fire is they played it on the computer saying this is what it sounds like it says incoming incoming cool. Wop, 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 wop. Incoming, incoming. Wop, wop. Video game that's, shit. That's what it sounds like. And they played that and it was just like, oh, that's that's crazy. But then as soon as we heard that, for, like, a couple of seconds later, we actually heard incoming, incoming. Wop, wop. It was for real. Oh. During our safety brief for it, it, we actually got hit with the IDF. Like, and we, they're like, are you playing? They kind of looked at each other like, did you just yeah. press play? Did, no, I didn't. Oh, fuck. Get on the ground. Everyone get on the ground. And oh. we, So we were just watching it like, what are these guys doing? There? And this is in like, right now in my head, I'm imagining you're on dirt, but in a, in a tent somewhere. Yeah. And fucking in Yeah, pretty much, man. It was like just a shanty town in Connex's. Uh, this one was a um, sort of fortified. It was did you say you were still in Dubai at this point? No, no, no. We, we flew yeah, into Afghanistan. Right. That so must have... The headspace in Dubai must have oh. felt like a Pre- fucking rugby league grand final week times a thousand. Oh, like Jesus. a fight week. Like yeah, yeah, fight week t- you know on I mean, acid. Yeah. We were yeah, just on, on ready. Yeah. Like we were doing live fire nearly every day dealing with um, like... Uh, explosives, getting real cat situations, the sims that we did there before we even went in. Cat situation? So, um, like a different category. Uh, like, um, so if there's injured, you'd wa- um, they do simulations where you'd run in and there'd be simulated fire explosions, really dark. And then you see a, um, uh, say, like a, one of those mannequin sort of fake dolls, like pissing out fake blood, and you've got to get in there and stop it. Like, you've got to get a tourniquet all that sort of stuff while returning fire in these sims while people are watching you like grading you making sure you're up to level mm-hmm. and if you're not chances are you won't go in right yeah and fair enough oh mate and fair enough. yeah and I, I i really respect that and I, I really like that we've got it so stringent and you do six months training beforehand for battle prep but before that you're doing you're going out field nearly six to eight months of the year and if they assess you there are you on the first plane home and sort of back to upskilling again they'll just go hold on what if you yeah, really surely you if you really you would have been up. tested fucking to the utmost before yeah. you got there so that they would have known yeah like this sort of it's those sort of like things that they try to weed out mm. in the very first bit yeah like a p- 
kapuka. Like yeah. they want to get rid of that sort of exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. It was. Um. And the heat is probably the the only thing I remember about Dubai. We were in the middle of the day doing live fire runs, and the like. The widget said it was nearly fifty degrees mm. in the midday sun. So when you're um like doing all your basically you're like patrolling i believe or yeah yeah we you, did so um you're doing patrols as well as con- continual training you're always still training even though if there's not you know action going on they're still putting you through drills and shit oh at home yeah oh yeah 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 constantly you play play um like uh engines and army you know like you display those sort of so stuff. do you get what what do you get in the way of downtime oh you get like a few weeks you get your you recruit, you leave, just like any sort of government job. Mm. But like, I mean, as as in like a standard day, are you like, is there a knock-off time? Like oh, yeah, 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 knock yeah. Off? Yep, 7.30 um, PT, yep. and then back at 9, and then normally if uh, if it's normal times 4, but you always mm. want that early elusive is it, is knock. This, is this why you're over there, though? Do you have? A, did you work like an eight-hour shift a day while you're in that yeah. environment yeah they try and keep routine oh. uh, i was never i didn't stay at um tk i was out a little bit further um and then out further again and we sort of had a pretty relaxed sort of sort of job we were on overwatch um but i mean we were on 24 hours a day like we'd roll pickets like you do two hours i do two hours for 24 hours for however many days and we were up there for a long time and uh it it we got i got comfortable yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, you get used to it, I suppose. Yeah, like yeah. Anything you you find your little patterns of routine. Yeah. And your little feeling of home, I guess. Yeah, when I first got there in country, uh, went out there to my patrol base. We just got a um, Chinook took us out, and you get in there, and there's high ground everywhere. Like mm. you're in the you're at the bottom of this high ground, and you're like, is there someone on the top of these hills trying to shoot me? Fuck. And you, I immediately thought of that but then you can see everyone else that's sort of been around a bit um they've been there for the last eight months and they're relaxed so you're trying to act relaxed but mm. you, i was packing it yeah, how that can it not be in the oh, back of your mind you know? first 30 like, minutes um mm. because there were stories of uh some australian uh diggers got killed from far away fire on a ridge top with some in guys in the open you know and it just sticks in your head and you're like nah it's all right it's all right but uh first 30 minutes uh i was never felt that sort of i was wigging out vulnerability oh man but then you're just like okay mm. and you're with your mates so it's normal that's and that's true that's mm. true the mateship of it that you can't mm. underestimate that i'd imagine no we were in in training they put you in hard times you know with mm. the same group of guys yeah, so right. you know each other so you bonded and because they were there you don't do it for you you don't we're at our um sort of march out before we even went out um overseas he goes you know what, like, don't do it for Australia, don't do it for this, do it for your mate. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's dead set. He see, it wasn't um, at the brigade commander or anything, it was just our company mm. major, and he, um, that's what he said, and it stuck in, it sticks in you, and, like, I've just got some of the best mates from that trip. It, um, I'm you, sure, yeah. Some of the, like, that bond that you get... Um, Oh, it's crazy. Immeasurable, yeah. 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 And are you like, um, is it you stay strictly as in Australian Army? You don't you don't sort of affiliate with the um, alliances, I guess, like in, in British troops or US troops or anything like that? Well, or? Um, we were there with um, some Americans and we sort of, uh, they were at our, our base, um, for, uh, patrol base Wali, represent. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. And uh, they were the fire, they would, um, the artillery boys on the hill they would always bring fire yeah um, and they got called up sometimes so but we work with them and there were some really great guys and there weren't some great guys mm. yeah I think that's with any group of people yeah like life yeah, yeah. totally fuck man yeah that's a that's a, a gnarly thing like I have the utmost respect for all servicemen and, and women and I think you know it's just an amazing fucking contribution to you know the society that we currently run and the need for that kind of protection because we do have you know state state lines drawn between different nations and mm. the reality of the fucking human organism is that we war and until we're at a place in our society and in our humanity that we're you know i guess a bit more of a global culture or something like that there's always mm. going to be a need for that border protection you yeah know? i know the uh the u.s military is obviously massive but 
they pay homage to their veterans so much. Oh yeah, it's a it's a constant thing for them. I, do you think we should probably see a bit more than that out here? I mean, we have I two, think we have two I days on I a calendar think, year. I think the first the first point that you make is is the main the, the thing one, behind yeah. that is that. The U.S. are a fucking war machine, man. So their troops are constantly being recognised. Not that you know, like Australian troops don't deserve more recognition, but I think um, you know, if, statist- if you yeah. were to, if you were to ask any any Australian, they would have a genuine you know a genuine appreciation and gratitude for servicemen and women. Mm-hmm. But I think you know the the way that the U.S. behaves as as a country sort of deems that they have that consistent mm. sort of you know output of mm. you know yeah, we're because constantly uh, all you, about the soldiers because they're constantly yeah. involved in something people who have either passed away or who have sitting at home totally permanently disabled from combat yeah. would be in the <coughs> oh hundreds and i mean of thousands, you think about millions over there think about how many wars has australia decided to start like mm. Fucking! It, it, I don't know if there's any man. It's it's always been as an an allegiance, and it's a superpower like the states that have the ability. When there's a situation going down, like in Syria or something like that, to be like, Can you know, we're going to get involved and we're going to play referee here, and we're going to be like, you know, fucking step in. I reckon. Uh, us us. I'll, I'll ask you a question. When wasn't the U.S. in a war? Yeah, or well, fighting. Not Can in you, my, not you know? in my lifetime. Yeah, like yeah. and you go not oh then like Desert Storm and they're always in a conflict. They're always in a conflict, but yeah. like they are some of the most patriotic and really hard. But they are a big army. You know, we're a small force. You yeah. know, yeah, like, and that's why we have to align with somebody mm. like that. That's why <coughs> we have to go get involved in their wars. Is because mm. if anything ever comes to our shores, we need to have that support. I heard a statistic once, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but that Australia has enough artillery that if it was to continuously fight in combat, it would last us like 48 hours or something like that. Oh, we don't have much. Yeah, yeah. like there's a like. It depends. If you're getting ready to go overseas, they'll give you anything you want to fire. If you want to blow something up, they'll give you a hundred of it, you know. But if you're out of that rotation, you will you count how many bullets you got, you mm. know. Don't, oh, don't waste How crazy more. is like um, the whole, what's that movie, War- Warlord? Or Lord of War. Lord of War. Nicholas yeah, Cage. Nicholas Cage and Jared Leto. Fucking Good beastly film. performances Great movie. from those two yeah. dudes. But um, that whole sort of in between middleman, the dude's fucking supplying both sides of the army, and you know tapping into that that crazy aspect of society where we still war with each other and stuff like that. Like, they I saw something on the internet, and don't take it for granted. I, it just sort of woke me up a little bit. Uh, in the past, say ten years, there's been a hundred, no, seventeen hundred and thirty-five billion dollars spent on war, and it only takes. They say about 135 billion to cure poverty. Mm. How how many billions been spent on war? 1735. 1700, yeah. and it takes 300. 130. 135 130. to cure poverty. Yeah. Ten times over go. what they've spent on war, and we could have no no hunger and probably imagine if everyone just stopped bluing and we just put that towards like medical advancements oh, and shit mm. like that. It'd be unbelievable. Man, you know what? I've got just put it into something that really grinds here with my an gears. Pack <laughs> with a real doll in the fucking bedroom. <laughs> Freedom, baby. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is it. We made it. We made it. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, fuck. And then so how y- you ended up doing a year or, or two years? Did you do two tours? No, uh, I only did the f- uh, the one tour. It was eight months. Eight months, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, right, man. and that was how old went? That was like 24 or something like that? Yeah, right? it was uh, in 2011. So this is 2016. What um, what color HSV did you get when you got back? <laughs> 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 no, shout out, shout out. Yeah, shout out. I've seen a couple of boys do that, but look, not uh, probably not Townsville. Be- yeah, probably <laughs> not. The, probably not the best move, boys. Man, Fucking you, ration that shit. I think the uh, the best performing Ford and Holden uh, stores were up in Townsville. <laughs> man. Oh man, oh absolutely. <laughs> Darwin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Everything's lowered. Everything's loud. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Dark as fuck, Tim. Oh, man. So dark. Chameleon paint. R- really shiny rims, though. Oh, <laughs> With a uh, Southern Cross sticker on it. Oh, stop. Good on it. Shout out, shout out to the boys. Fucking A. Yeah, they work hard. They, I've had some of them. 
some of the best guys I've ever uh, met are in the army and still still serving today. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and like I'd take my hat off to them to see them to see them still sticking it out and doing mm. it, and because it's what they love, mm. you know. Um, and good on them. It just wasn't for me. That's it, man. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, and not everyone can say that they do what they love for their job. Yeah. And I, I think, think that's cool if you, you know, like if you pursue things to the fucking full extent, like, you know, you, you decided to join the army and going to Afghanistan and serving eight months is the full extent. That's yeah. like, you know, as as far deep, well, I mean, obviously you could probably go deeper, but that's that's pretty much in the dick and balls of that situation. Like, and for you as a human being to, you know, recognize in yourself that, hey, that's that's not for me and, you know, I've, I've pursued this path, I've pursued this path and, like, to not treat it as, like, you know, fucking dead ends or anything but, like, this amazing fucking chapters in, in the story of your life, you know, yeah. like, and here you are now, like, studying fucking electrical engineering and, and aerodynamics. Or yeah. Whatever the fuck, like. Yeah, no, I, it, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it just wasn't for me, you know, I wasn't fulfilled. I was going to work and just not really feeling it and it wasn't what I wanted to do but I love that people want to do it you mm. know and it and it was it was a hard time when I was like okay oh yeah. god what am I going to do because I didn't know I wanted career change to man, that's uni. the thing and, but you can forever take that with you you've got you've got the medals mm. that you can wear proudly each and every Anzac day when you fucking yeah. celebrate and it's a fucking cool cool chapter in your life and you're out and you can like there's still you still got the best part of fucking 35 years of a working career ahead of you. That's and the thing. Mate, it? it's what I learned in the army that's keeping me at uni today. Like, mm. it's, I treat it like a job. You got to, um, I look at it every day. Uh, I do it on the weekends and I work hard because I want it, you know? Fuck yeah. I just got a, um, fucking pump, pump, pump the tires. I just <laughs> got a, uh, <laughs> I got a uh, letter in the mail. Uh, the other week uh, last week and it was from the golden key society where um it's this american um like society that you can only be asked to join oh, because you're in some the freemason yeah shit, I hope so, <laughs> like, <laughs> so i've just got to so give you 20 yeah, yeah. grand and they want yeah. me to shave Each my hair yeah. and then i've got to <laughs> shave yeah. my head <laughs> all they're after is a 20k <laughs> retainer <laughs> and that i like fucking go to a couple of conferences a and year i am your poster it's, boy it's like a pyramid man it's fucking yeah. awesome yeah. Like. it works <laughs> man. i'll make some money man then you'll make some and then yeah. you put some in and then yeah. it actually really works so what i'm here to actually talk about is an investment <laughs> in <laughs> Opportunity oh, no. for you, boys. Plug. <laughs> Look under your chair, boys. Oh, it's the yellow sticker. Oh, oh. you're in the lucky chair. Like, oh, fuck me. So, so anyway, got sorry. You. Yeah. What is this? Anyway, and, and it's just um, I don't know. My mum, she opened. I will get all my mail sent to my parents' house. I move around that much in the last <laughs> yeah. ten years. I haven't got a real address. Might as well be a PO box. Yeah, yeah. and mum, she's opened it, and she's like, oh, I shouldn't have opened it, but saw my name, saw what it was probably for, and she's like. Fuck it. I'm going to open this. Fuck him. <laughs> I'm going to say it is. <laughs> the fucking curiosity got the better of her. Shout out, mum. How good is yeah. that? Uh, she's, no, she's, she's great. <laughs> she's under the bus this week for breaking the law. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll have a uh, yeah. No, but it, And she took a photo and she sent it to me and she said, um, wow, this is great. And I'm in the top 15%. Of like um of the grade or whatever. Fuck and yeah, man. That's um and it, it's just it's nice to get that sort of recognition when you've you know you put in the work. Mm. And Absolutely, man. Yeah. And but like uh, people are, re you get two, uh, three different types. I reckon you're either really smart and you know like, you know you just got it. Mm. You could turn up, boom, ace it, or you're smart and you work hard. You know you either you really give it. And I think that's it. Like, I don't just take it for granted. I fucking work on that shit. It's just like a martial art. That's it, man. Mathletics. Just, yeah, mathletics, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Gold Coast 2018 comp Math games. Yeah, Mathlete, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Mathlete. It just comes down to the old adage too there, bro. Like, it is you only get out of it what you put in. Yeah. If, to get reflective, like, I need to fucking... I think we all need a shot of that sometimes. You can get stuck in your fucking... In your groove and... You fucking sh just showed you getting the results because you are putting it in, man. It's good that you and you're passionate about it too. I can see it. Yeah, yeah I think what's what's interesting though, like, um, <clears throat> and it's something that I've recently like had to sort of consider is, um, you know, you you live your whole life like school is set up on this thing of you know achieving 
um, you know, a certain standard in order to get to the next stage, which is the next grade. And you continually sort of like these little gateways that get you through and you're, you're always aiming for that thing that's ahead or whatever. And I think it's it's natural that that then carries over into your adult life and, you know, in the form of ambition, whether it be study or career or, you know, personal life and, and sort of making families and all those different sort of like ambitions and things like that. But ultimately, like, <coughs> I guess we all end up at a stage in life and, and probably the thing that I've been thinking about is like my parents are at retirement age and I know my mum for one is not ready to retire you know like you you get to a certain point and you've defined yourself entirely by your occupation and to then take away that livelihood i suppose is is not just taking away a paycheck or or you know the you know the financial gain that you get from (coughs) being being in the working force but it's it's a loss of identity in a way and i think that's why it's really important to you know pursue your passions throughout life and and to have things outside of your work that you, you're not just so goal orientated and focusing on this golden nugget that once I get that everything's going to be sweet you mm. know to, to have that appreciation for the fact that hey we're fucking here we're living we're breathing like how good is this you know there's there's another there's another sunrise there's, there's breath in my lungs and shit like that and you know I think ambition and and all that sort of thing is is really important and it's and it's a good thing to have and it's a good drive to to you know work for but ultimately i think you know what what you're sort of talking about in that you know you pursue certain paths to a certain end and then and then they just become a part of your life story you know it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be success or failure all the time you know yeah no it is and you um if you ask me uh if i would do it again um I would probably do it all again, you know. Exactly. It man. was uh, it was some of the best times of my life and some of the hardest, but I'd still do it again. Yeah, sure. Knowing you. it all again. Oh man, and it's been um it's been absolutely awesome to fucking have the chat with you and like uh and sit down and really pick your brain on it. And it is an amazing story, man. So so thanks for sharing. Bro. No worries, and it, it it's just really only scratch the surface, you know. Like there's tons of other stuff out there. That Definitely, man. In the four years of time, it's, yeah. been, it's been a hell of a ride. But fucking thanks for coming on. It's not to say that you can't come on again either. They fucking absolutely, bro. Knock off national fucking eat this shit. Yeah, yeah hashtag <laughs> open studio door. So hashtag uh, save Kyle. Definitely, yeah. man. Well, we're leading into uh, you got Panthers Tigers tonight, and uh, ahead of the fucking main dance for the weekend for me, the Bledisloe one, mm. Australia New Zealand. That's that's the uh, focal point of tomorrow as we fucking stretch towards the weekend. But thanks again for tuning in. We've fucking ha- had a ball as per usual. Yeah, this time's gone uh, gone super quick. So. Thanks for listening. We'll uh, we'll bring you more episodes, no doubt. Until next time. Catch you later. Peace.